to Liu Sheng here, host of the Extreme Fully Fishing Channel. Today is May 19th, 2019. It is going to be my outing number 77 of this year. And uh, you guys can already see, right? It is super hot down here. I am sweating bullets. <laughs> Anyways, recently on my Instagram, I actually posted something about the Aero Tackle soft plastics, right? Um, you guys may have heard about these before. I have many, many videos on the YouTube channel of me using Aero Tackle soft plastics, right? Especially the Anisoptera and the B-Vibe. And you know, uh, recently they came out with new colors for their soft plastics, very cool stuff. I decided to do a little post on Instagram and check with you guys if you wanted me to come out here and uh, use them to catch some fish, right? I, I mean, after all, it has been a little while since I have done some wading, creek, finesse, fishing, right? And let me tell you, the comments on that post were so overwhelming that I just had to do it. So the main objective of this video, I'm just gonna use some B-Vibe and Anisoptera soft plastics today. 164 ounce jig. If you're not familiar with the soft plastics, I am going to be linking a few videos in the cards along this video. And we, I will try to catch as many different species of fish as possible from this little creek in Media, Pennsylvania today. I hope you guys are excited about this fishing session. I certainly am. I'm going to be spending the next five hours over here or so. So let's see what shows up. Let's see what we got here. I got a bunch of B-Vibes and Anisoptera. As you guys can see, I got different colors. I got pink, I got chartreuse, I got brown. Well, since the water today is kind of clear, I'm going to go with a more natural approach. So I'm going to be using the brown Anisoptera. The creek is looking wonderful, my friends. It's filled with life. Check this out, huh? We got some newborn tadpoles right over here at the edge of the little creek, so cute. There are some minnows right in front of me, some kind of new hatch here. Maybe uh, some species of fish have just spawned. Oh man, I can't wait. Let's get this rigged up. Actually, I really wonder what is going to be the first species of the day. I've been casting for five minutes, haven't gotten a single bite yet. Ooh, talk about it. Ooh, five minutes didn't get a single bite. Then something decided to bite on the Anisoptera. And it does not look like a sunfish. What we got here, our first species of the day is a fall fish, the Semotilus corporalis. One of the reasons I like wading is because I am constantly in touch with water. I can soak my, I can soak my fish in the water, right? Let it get a little breath of air, breath of water, and I can take care of my fish nicely. All right, first piece of the day, little fall fish, shiny and silvery. I like that. This species is actually a very sensitive species of fish, so I am actually quite glad that we are by the water. A lot of people on the channel tend to say, oh, Leo keeps his fish outside of the water for too long, right? What you guys don't see is that when I have access to water, I am constantly soaking the fish in the water in between taking the photos, right? And, uh, and doing the data registration. All right, man, first species came up. It's time to slay. A fall fish for a first species, man. That was unexpected. Oh, there's another one. Whoa, did you see that jump? What is this? No way, it's another fall fish. We got ourselves a, a school of fall fish over here. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> that fall fish leaped out of the water for a little bit too. Man, give a nice jump, huh, little fall fish? All right, go back where you belong, son. You're telling me there's only fall fish here? It's like a school of fall fish and nothing else? Oh, that's bigger. That's bigger. That's bigger. What is this? This ain't no fall fish, right? No, oh, it's a trout. I think it's a trout. 
Wait, is it a fall fish or a trout? Wait, what is this? Is this a bigger fall fish? Well, you know, this fish can grow pretty big. Wow, it is just a bigger fall fish. My man. Ooh, son. I'll take a nice shot of this one over here. Wow, man. I mean, this can get big, okay? That's a spawning. That's a spawning fall fish right over here. Holy moly. Let me take a shot of this one. This one's all mango, but it deserves it. They do stock this creek with trout. So initially I thought this was going to be a, you know, a decent sized trout. Turns out just to be a spawning fall fish. Very beautiful <laughs> specimen, but not a new species for today. Let's give a cast over there. All the way under that three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's one. Okay, maybe I set the hook a little bit too strong. <laughs> it's a little red breast sunfish. Second species of the day. Nothing too big. The Lepomis auditus. I mean, other than the fact that this fish is, for some reason, real fat. It's been feeding. Man, this is thick, son. It's been feeding good in this creek, this little fella, huh? I have to say, for its size, this fish is pretty obese. Oh, 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 chunky, huh? Went back down there, it's right over there. All right, go call your great grandfather, son. Is there anything else around there? Oh, yeah. It's another red breast? Yeah, yeah, little one. Hmm, <laughs> Having fun with the. Oh, actually, it's a bluegill. The Lepomis macrocidus. I have caught it in this creek before, so not so unusual for this species to show up. Well, it is never a bad idea to get the easy ones out of the way first. This bluegill seems to have a big leech. You see this? Oh, it's pectoral fin. Let me see if I can switch the pectoral so you guys can take a look at the leech on the other side. But yeah, look at that. This right here is a big leech, right? Or maybe three of them. I don't even know. Well, even the leech needs some love, okay? So I'm not gonna mess with Mother Nature's natural order, all right? Just gonna release this bluegill over here when it's ready to go. Man, that's a beauty right here. Okay, there it goes. Awesome, third species of the day. What fascinates me is that the hole is where I am standing at and all these sunfish, this is a nice size one too, all the sunfish, panfish, they're actually in the shallows right next to the structure. That is to say that when you come out here and you fish creeks like these, you can never underestimate the spots, right? Look at that, huh? Beautiful red breast sunfish, Lepomis auditus, native species to the United States of America, native species to my local creeks inhaled the Anisoptera. No doubt the Aerotaco lures work for multi-species fishing, pan fishing, even trout fishing. This video is not about that, right? I know for a fact that it does work because I've tested these in the past before. I just want to see how many different species I can land on this little fella today. And this is the first one too, okay? In terms of durability, I haven't even changed it yet. All the fish today caught on this one so far. Yep, this is it. I'm not going farther than this. I remember this place being a pretty darn deep hole. There's one. Nice. Nice. What is it? Is it a bass? Is it a trout? Oh, it's a bass. I think it's a bass. Nice. Very nice. I remember this place being a, a deep hole. That's why, you know, I usually don't wade farther than over here i think my arm may have blocked the jump of the fish so you guys didn't get to see it but this is a new species for today it's a smallmouth bass swimming right around my feet here yeah that's a smallie species number four for the day that's beautiful 
I don't catch a lot of smallmouth bass from this particular creek. So to see a sample of the Micropterus dolomio over here, that is always uh, a pleasure. This is fascinating. Species number four for today. Like I said, I don't usually see the smallie showing up in this particular creek that I fish at. This, this place is stocked with trout, so you know, sometimes you see your share of trout over here, right? But yeah, it's molly like this, man. And you guys saw how hard this little fella fight. Oh, it's ready to go. Look at that. Yeah, man, that's great. Fourth species of the day, Anisoptera killing it. Is it still the same Anisoptera that I started the day with? How about here? I mean, there's a nice piece of structure right over here. I knew it. Dang, dude. I knew it. I mean, nice piece of structure right over here. It's produced one of the biggest red breasts of the day. Wow, it was right next to me. Look at the size of this panfish. Holy cow. Wow, raw power, raw beauty right here. Dang, you know, I know that I repeat the word beautiful millions of times on my YouTube channel, but how else can you describe this fish? It's just beautiful, man. That's a fish. Uh, it's another red breast though. Nice size red breast, but yeah, I think it is about time for me to start heading upstream. There are some decent fish over here because it is a deep hole I can't really wade downstream anymore. As you guys can see, this is like a, one of the bigger red breast sunfish that I have caught today. Yeah, I can't wade to that side because it's all soft mud and I am already hip high over here. So I'm going to start heading upstream to some other holes and really try to find some trout and some, and some other species of fish that I haven't caught today yet. Got a nice current going on. It's got a nice depth and the pipe is releasing water. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, what do we got here? Dang, man. Put a little bit of drag. Wow. Folks at home, folks at home. You no, know, I knew it was a pretty all right fish if it pulls the four pound drag. Look at the size of this fall fish right here hooked on the side of the mouth. I know the light is not the greatest light over here. That's a male fall fish. It's got the tubercles on its face, side of the mouth, on the Anisoptera. Holy cow. Will you look at the size of this thing right here? And they grow much bigger than this, of course, but for my area, one this size is pretty decent. A size like this, you know, that's pretty decent and they fight so good. Highly underestimated species. Okay. All right, son. What is this? This is not a fall fish, right? It gave a little jump. It's a little smally. Wow, baby. The smally decided to come out and play. Look at this, huh, folks? We already caught a smallmouth today, so this is definitely not a new species for the day. I'm fishing the evil pipe right over here in hopes that, you know, the pipe brings a, a few new species, right? And guess what? At least a bass showed up. Wonder if a new species is going to show up soon. Wow, brother. You don't even, you don't even need to do anything. You just cast the thing out there and it's like instant, instant hit. Look at the size. Oh my goodness, bro. These red breasts are rush, chunky. Oh my man. Beautiful and chunky. Oh yeah. What we got here? Big fall fish. Big fall fish. Biggest one of the day. 
Yeah, man, these fall fish are a blast. They ain't no trout and they ain't no bass. But let me tell you something, they fight good. Look at that, huh? About eight, eight, nine inches. Man, they fight against the current too. These guys fight real good. Ah, folks, I want to continue fishing out here, but I'm actually having some technical difficulties. Ain't gonna lie to you guys. My Shimano Sedona 500 FD got soaked in the water a few times. I mean, I can soak it all I want now, you know, because the gear is grinding. I'm having some technical difficulties over here to reel my stuff in and even to feel the bite because the gear just keeps grinding. I can't really show you here on the YouTube video, but this is not normal. I can feel it, the inside, you know. Oh, I just got to blow up on my Anisoptera. I think I'm ready to call it a day. I wanted to explore a little bit more, but yeah, with a reel like this, ain't gonna happen. Two things I would like to say at the end of this video. Shimano, this is so disappointing. I still have a few hours to fish out here. I haven't really explored the entire creek, right? And my Shimano 500 FI just gave up on me. I mean, when I bought the Shimano Sedona FD, not the FI, the FI is the new model. I had the FD for three years. And you know, I used it and abused it and it worked for three years without a problem. If you guys remember on the YouTube channel, the Shimano Sedona FI, I bought it only a few months ago and I dipped it in the water maybe a few times and the gears are already cranking on me, right? It's like really hard to reel it in. So this is quite a disappointment. Like I said, I still have time to fish out here today and I am being forced to fish to finish my fishing session, you know, without fully exploring this creek. On a side note, well, it was a wonderful day on the water for the few hours that I fished out here. I would like to emphasize that all the fish that I have caught in this video, okay, all the fish that I have caught today, quantity-wise, I have used only, let me see, see, I got three left over here. I have caught all those fish in with less than one pack of the Aerotackle Anisoptera, okay? As a matter of fact, I caught all of those fish using only five Aerotackle Anisoptera. So when it comes to durability, it's like 10 out of 10. I did emphasize in this video that, you know, it's not like I'm coming out here and testing the lure, right? I've used Aerotackle soft plastics before and they work extremely well. So if you have never used them before, Make sure you go to the website and check them out. I will leave, you know, all the gear is always in the description of the video, right? Save yourself some money. And if you know how to hook it well and use it well, man, five little soft plastics for all the fish that I caught today, that is pretty darn good. If you guys want to see more Aerotackle soft plastic videos, I'm going to leave a poll above. Vote, okay? Give me some feedback in the comment section below. And if I get like an overwhelmingly positive feedback, I'll make sure maybe to pick a pond or a lake next time or even a river and take the Aerotackle Microfinet soft plastics and see what we can catch with it out there, all right? So thank you very much for watching this video, folks. Tight lines and take it easy. There's one. What we got here? Rock bass, isn't it? It's a nice rock bass too. Look at the size of this rock bass. Yeah, I didn't really include this on the YouTube video earlier today. The Umbloplites rupestris. Very nice sample right here. Well, kind of fishing with a broken reel, but <laughs> did a live stream since the outro of this video and they landed a brook trout. Uh, landing all the different species out here. Fun. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, nice. Oh, did you see that? That was a trout. I just missed a brook trout. Another brook trout. 
on the anisoptera. Man, got off. Another one. It's another one, isn't it? I think it's another brook trout. Gotta go down for this guy. Another brook trout. Look at that. Slaying, slaying them on the anisoptera. Small ones, sure, but they are brook trout regardless. Side of the mouth, just gotta do a quicker hook. Oh, went by itself. Yeah, nice. I'm going to do a little bit more fishing with my broken reel. But I just wanted to show you guys, right? I'm, I'm ending this video right here. I just wanted to show you guys, right, that the Anisoptera doesn't just catch like the smaller species of fish, okay? If you have trout around your area or any other species, really, these little microfinet soft plastics are really, really good. So I highly recommend them. All right, folks. <laughs> now for real, I will see you guys next time. Oh my goodness, I think I found him. Holy cow, I found him, I found him. Holy cow, they are right there. They are right there, this is real. They exist and they are here. Now I have to be careful not to spook them. We struck gold, folks, this is it.